Today we're gonna be ranking all the Call of Duty Zombies maps from worst to best. Now this became a new trend, like remember that time when John Cena trend was like strong AF? Now this also became a new trend in the Zombies community, which I like for numbers of reasons. I feel like I've seen Bluefoot start this trend, but I could be totally wrong. But it's a really fun thing to do now, especially when we have nothing really to do and when we're dry on content and when we're waiting for that new Call of Duty. And we know next year will be Papa Treyarch and I am patiently waiting for Papa Treyarch to return and this can help Treyarch understand what we like and what we don't like about certain maps and by no means the last map on this list will be class as Garbo or garbage it's just going to be something that is not going to be up to par when we compare that to other maps that we have from Treyarch and I want to quickly say that this list is going to be purely based off of visuals how the map looks feels how it plays the content of the map are they relevant and how enjoyable and fun is to play that specific map and let's say uh, the map passes in every category but if it's not enjoyable to play well don't expect it to be at the number one spot and I'm also gonna combine the zombies community likes and dislikes including some of my own as well and I want you guys to comment your list after you end up watching this video and also tell me if you agree or disagree with some of the arguments because let's say Treyarch is watching this video they're not gonna watch it but let's say they are watching this video and they go down in the comments and they read what you have to say I mean we could definitely get a better product in the near future and this could definitely help Treyarch make better decisions and everything like that that's why like we're making this video and uh, real quick I want to shout out all of my brand new subscribers if you're new to the channel hey make sure to subscribe for some daily content and everything like that and let me know in the comments so I can feature you in my next video but coming in at number 21 spot we have Zetsubu no Shima. Now, you may be saying, Skizzle, you crazy. You don't have transit. I'm gonna get to transit in just a little bit. I'm gonna get to it, alright? I, I promise. But at number 21 spot, we have Zetsubu no Shima. Now, I don't know how to start with this because, uh, first of all, the map does have a lot of content. Skull of Nonstop of Wonder Weapon or Specialist Wonder Weapon is one of my favorite. But KD4 as a Wonder Weapon is not something I like. Especially, like, upgrading that shit is just super tedious. But, uh, it's like you gotta get that rainbow water through three times and you gotta water that shit in order to get that the plant system was unique but it wasn't executed very well I feel like if you needed to just water that plant once and you would get what you were looking for let's say that the shell I, I guess this could have made the map slightly better in my opinion but the fact that you gotta water the same plant three goddamn times it's like let's say you're on round 20 you gotta water that plant on 20 then you come back 21 and <laughs> you gotta water that shit again on 22 as well and it's just something it's not really enjoyable I mean the Easter egg was alright I did enjoy the Easter egg ending cutscene but at the same time all you're doing is fixing that damn elevator and at that time when this map was first released we already expected like Takuya Masaki is gonna kill Takuya Masaki so that was not like something mind-blowing and uh, all of other elements of Zatsubu Nishima like thrashers oh that just kills the whole fun factor of this map playing this map once in a while it's really fun the setting is unique and everything like that absolutely love it and especially like turning on the power at the time of release that was considered real bad but if you play other zombies maps and you come back to this map once in a while I mean it's not something like a huge deal you're going to turn on the power and you're going to enjoy yourself doing that like I personally played this map like four days ago and I enjoyed doing that but as soon as Thrasher spawn in well it's just going to kill that fun factor and that's why I have it on my number 21 spot but coming in at number 20 now don't be shocked when I say this but we have Shinonuma now first of all the map setting is unique I absolutely love the visuals and everything like that it is enjoyable to play but only for the first couple of times and after that it has nothing really to offer it's one of those maps that you're going to play once you're gonna enjoy your time but after that it's going to be something that you're never going to look back and go back and play and of course this is a world at W zombies map I, I cannot say the W word like I'm gonna be put in the non kids friendly spot and that's not gonna be happy for me like Papa YouTube is listening if you get what I'm saying so Shinonima was remastered in Black Ops 3 of course the new gobblegum system I feel like gave it more of uh, longevity per se but at the same time it's just one of those maps that you're gonna play it once and then you're going to forget it that's how I personally feel and that's how a lot of people feel that I talk to and everything like that so that's why it's out of 
our number 20 spot, but at the same time, this map introduced the Wonder Waff DG2, which is one of the best looking uh, Wonder Weapon to this day, and uh, one of the best Wonder Weapon in terms of performance as well. So that map actually introduced us to that, and in terms of storyline, Peter McCain, my boy Peter, right? So in terms of that, it's really a good map, but it doesn't have a lot to offer. And coming in at number 19, we have Viruk. Now, in terms of setting, I personally enjoy it. It's uh, really unique, it's the Asylum and everything like that, and back in the day when this map was first released, of course, it was mind-blowing. Oh, of course, Shino Numa, I could say the same for Shino Numa as well. Uh, when they were first released, they were considered as the best zombies map on Earth, right? But, uh, Viruk is that map that you're gonna play, and once you're set up on this map, you're, you're not gonna really enjoy yourself. Of course, if you are going to grind for numbers, then it, it can be really good. But once you're going to get that number, let's say round 50 or round 100, you're not going to go back and play. Of course, playing this map with friends can be fun for a while, but it's not going to last that long. Worked is a map that I have been playing quite a lot recently because of ZWC, but I've been sucking ass at it. And the more I play, the more I realize as soon as I get set up on this map, let's say I got the Wonder Waff DG, maybe Reagan Mark II, but as soon as I get set up on this map, I personally don't enjoy this map. And especially once I pass round 20 on this map, I really don't have anything to do right so that's why it's at our number 19 spot but coming in at number 18 spot don't be shocked but we have ascension now ascension is one of the best zombies map to this day but at the same time it doesn't have a lot of content to offer it's just one of those maps that you would play once and then you're not going to really enjoy it I, I see a lot of people not a lot of people but some people actually going for around 100 and this is one of the easiest map I would say if you are a new uh, zombies player then and that's the map you gotta play and everything like that but of course uh, you're just gonna get bored out of your mind when you're playing this map quite a lot it's fun to play once in a while with your friends but it's not really fun to play by yourself if you're gonna go for around 50 well good luck because you're going to be bored out of your mind it's not a hard map you can easily get to around 50 even 100 but it's not really enjoyable to play there is nothing really on this map of course uh, in terms of storyline we had Gersh my, my neighbor Gersh right but it's not really fun to play and I guess I am done talking about this map but at number 17 spot we have transit now you be you may be saying okay so this nibba actually put transit over ascension I'm done with this nibba but hey hear me out transit uh, at the time, of course, it was fun to play, but then a lot of people hated Transit. But when you go back to play this map once in a while, it's really fun. I'm gonna say play this map with your friends, and you're really going to enjoy your time, especially when they leave you behind and they take the bus without you. You're, you're really gonna enjoy your time. But honestly, the map gets a lot of hate, but at the same time, it's not the worst map of all time. But to improve this map, I would say if there was no fog or the, if there was a gun in town, of course, like, I'm talking about the Transit, not like Town of Alone. but if we had like a weapon in town I would say this map would bang ass but at number 16 spot we have Nagdar and Toten. now originally I wanted to kind of like place Nagdar and Toten close to Shinonuma but the more I played the more I enjoyed this map I don't know like what is it about this map of course the map doesn't really have a lot of content but in Black Ops 3 of course it was remastered and I feel like Gobble Gums is something that makes me appreciate this map more and want me or makes me want to play this map more and more because you could do those starting room challenges you got bullet boost you got like wall power crate power and everything like that you get the thunder gun with crate power you got that shit upgraded you get the rk5 in the starting room and you get dead wire on it and you train on that map for days on end and you're watching a movie while you're playing that map it's really fun like try it out if you have never tried not during total go ahead put a movie that you enjoy play this map and do those starting room challenges and you'll get better at zombies in terms of training but not only that you're actually going to enjoy this map so that's why it's at our number 16 spot but the map doesn't really have a lot of content but coming in at number 15 spot we have my nibba Dyrus, which was slightly better than transit is exactly what a lot of zombies players say but i personally don't agree with that slightly i i would say it's a it's a great map not a great map that's a wrong word i, I would say it's a good map but it's not the worst at the same time Dyrus is something that you're gonna play once in a while and you're gonna enjoy your time but then you're gonna be bored out of your mind.
mind pretty quick because uh, Slick Vifar is one of the greatest Wonder Weapon of all time. But now, of course, it's patched. But uh, at that time, it was considered one of the best Wonder Weapon, and still to this day, it's pretty good. But just hate the fact that Zatsubu Mishima KD4 kind of like copied that, if you get what I'm saying. But those little pingy type of things is something I hate. But uh, they do give you a free perk if you want. But once you pass round 20 and you got like Slick Vifar, you got the N94 pack, you got Claymores, you got Gallic Knuckles, you got Trample Steam you got all the perks that you want well it's that map is gonna get boring pretty fast and this map doesn't have a lot of content to offer and but coming in at number 14 spot we have five which was one of the best map ever in terms of its setting like you're actually killing zombies inside of Pentagon and playing as four different presidents it's really mind-blowing especially when that map was first released it was really good and of course now we have learned a little bit about my Niba, yuri or pentagon thief and everything like that which was really unique that was like a cool little and neat little feature but of course at that time everybody hated that uh, pentagon thief but looking back now it was a really cool feature and that's why i have it on my number 14 spot but other than that the map doesn't really have that much content but of course the setting what makes this map coming in at number 13 spot we have Shangri-La now some people say the map is on Mars others say it's on earth and everything like that I don't know about any of that but all I gotta say the map is really unique we don't have anything like this map we haven't got anything like this map like ever and Shangri-La in terms of like looks visual it is just mm. and the baby maker as a wonder weapon is also just mm. and this map has a lot of variety in terms of like content and zombies we have the napalm zombies we have the shrieker we have the damn monkeys which can give you a drop which was a cool ass system which i personally like but at the same time the map is challenging and that to some people is like a no no and that to some people is like a yee yee right so some people like that some people don't and uh, i personally am not a huge fan of shangri-la but i know a lot of people kind of like this map but at the same time a lot of people hate this map as well but in in terms of setting and in terms of content this map was all right and that's why it's at over a number 13 spot which is kind of like right in the middle but not quite and at number 12 we have moon which was like really a hit or miss for some people of course it is remastered in uh, in black ops 3 and i feel like that actually uh, created that longevity but at the same time it's not something that people are playing every single day or something that people would play once and then go back to it every single day if you get what i'm saying the map setting is really unique it was like it was mind-blowing when this map was first released but it was like really bland I, i'm not sure if that's a word or not maybe i'm mispronouncing it i don't know but uh the map doesn't really have a lot of content the the zap gun which was just mm, i absolutely love it and zombies uh were actually a little different of course the easter egg was like really damn good i feel like that was like the first map to have an easter egg on that scale it's like you blow up the earth it's like simply mind-blowing and that's why it's at our number 12 spot it, the map was just like really really good in that regards but at the same time a lot of people hate it a lot of people like it the area 51 alone was like really damn sick as well and uh, all I gotta say the map has a little bit of content but it's really a hit or miss for some people and that's why it's at over number 12 spot but coming in at number 11 we have the black ops 2 nuketown zombies now I personally really enjoyed this map like I I want to place this map like a little bit higher but I know a lot of people don't like this map and in terms of content you don't really have much but hey we have the Reagan Mark 2 and that is something that kind of like drives you insane because you don't get Reagan Mark 2 easily on this map and I personally like this map because it's really challenging it's like way more challenging than Shangri-La but it's a good challenge to have actually because you know Juggernaut may very well spawn on round 20 it can spawn on round 5 7 but most of the time it's like you never know when it's gonna spawn and a lot of people don't like that and at the same time a lot of people like that challenging factor to that map or randomness factor basically so uh, the map is really unique looks really cool and it's that map if you go to play once in a while it's really fun and if you actually go back and play on the other day hey it's still going to be really fun it's like really relevant is exactly what I'm gonna say but the map doesn't really fit in the storyline so that's why it kind of like falls a little bit and that's why it's at our number 11 spot but coming in at number 10 
we have the giant. Now, I don't know how to start with this map or where do I begin because I absolutely love this map. The Reese or the giant, same shit. We all love this map. It's that iconic map because this was the first map that introduced us to teleporters, pack a punch. Of course, we have the catwalk. Uh, and of course, on this map, you can very well train. And this is one of the map that if you are good at training, you're gonna be a good zombies player. And of course, it was remastered in Black Ops 3. So a whole uh, gobblegum edition is just, mm, I absolutely love it. The one Waff is absolutely magnificent as well and I personally really like this map but of course the more you play it the uh, the map will get boring but at the same time it's like if you go back and play this map you're really going to have a fun time and especially if you play this map with four players and you camp it out and you chill out on the catwalk thing you're really going to enjoy your time and that's why it's at over number 10 spot now coming in at number nine spot we have revelations now revelation is really a hit or miss for a lot of people it's a miss for me but I know a lot of people actually enjoy this map and in terms of storyline of course it was big but at the same time a lot of people hated that easter egg ending cutscene but to me I personally don't hate the easter egg ending cutscene I feel like when we get the new Treyarch zombies or the next Treyarch zombies game uh, we're, we're going to look at it differently and I'm really excited for the next Treyarch game because I want to be mind blown and everything like that and uh, uh, we have seen a little glimpse of course we know that we may play as Primus characters in the next game which is just like it turns me on big time if you get what I'm saying so uh, Revelation as a whole map it was purely for the nostalgia at first you love this map but then it's like I don't want to play this map again but of course I know a lot of people would go back and play this map but I personally for me it was like completely a miss like in terms of content it does have a lot to offer compared to like other maps that we have on this list but at the same time it's just like the same repetitive shit so that's why I have it on my number number nine spot but coming in at number eight we have Call of the Dead. Absolutely love this map. Of course, George Romero. First of all, rest in peace to George Romero. Track, if you're listening, please, for the love of God, remaster this map. Like, I would absolutely love you forever. Of course, Mob of the Dead as well, but Call of the Dead, just for, just do it for George Romero. And I absolutely love the map setting. That was kind of like the first snow map ever that I fell in love with. It was just like, mm, it was just like really, really good. Although the VR11, the Scavenger were not the greatest pieces of wonder weapons but at the same time they were really unique and George Romero as a boss he was really unique but at the same time he was annoying as well but it was really unique I personally love that water element like if you are gonna stand in water you're gonna freeze of course the water was frozen as hell I really like the layout of this map and we do have PhD flopper and this map introduced us to like Deadshot uh, which is not like the greatest perk of all time but still it did introduce us to quite a lot of new things and in terms of the map like the layout I personally love this map and uh, I'm not sure how you feel about the fog but I personally like that dynamic element to this map I of course like I would take the unfog rolling version of Call of the Dead any day if that was like available but we know it's not a thing now so I would just gladly take Call of the Dead and it's really a one of the greatest map of all time but coming in at number seven spot we have Barry now a lot of people love this map they're crazy about this map I personally tend to stay on the, the side of just liking this map. I don't love this map, but I like this map. I feel like the bank system kind of ruined this map, but at the same time, you have the option of like not taking the money out of your bank, right? Like you can decide if you want the money and you can also choose to not take out the money from your bank and play the map like regularly, like you would play any other map if you get what I'm saying. So that's that. I feel like this map has a lot to offer. We have my boy Leroy, of course, now we know his name is Arthur, if you get what I'm saying. We have recently learn about that uh, because he was kind of like correlated with uh, of course like the king storyline with the rise and the wrath something like that I'm not like really a big fan of uh, that story per se but that was mind-blowing like from buried to the rise and the wrath if you get what I'm saying but uh, it introduced us to one of the greatest wonder weapon of all time the Reagan mark II. so that's that we also have the paralyzed which is also one of the greatest wonder weapon of all time right and we also have the new perk vulture which I absolutely love it's like 
like one of the best perks. I gotta say it's the best perk after uh, Vito's Wine as well. It's like really just, oh. And of course we had the maze in the zombies map. We had the witches as well. I did not say the B word. I said the, the W word. So don't quote me on that one in the comments. But uh, we also have them. And this map is really, really good. Now coming in at our number six spot, we have Shadows of Evil, which is one of my favorite zombies map of all time. I gotta say that for sure. It has a lot of content to offer. And of course, this was like the first Black Ops 3 zombies map. And the celebrities that we got on this map, they are just, mm. oh, of course, Jessica, absolutely love her. And I, I feel like they work really well with this map. And in terms of the story arc and everything like that, of course, uh, this map introduced us to the brand new winter weapon, the Apotican. And of course, the, the Apothecans as well in general. And I gotta say, the Apothecan Servant is probably the best winter weapon of all time as well. We have those little Arnies like Monkey Bums. Uh, this map has a lot of content, I would say, and it is pretty damn deep in terms of storyline, in terms of content. We have a lot of training spots, we have a lot of stuff, and we have that little Easter egg in this map as well. Of course, like, uh, Richtofen comes and snatches that summoning key, and that was, like, absolutely brilliant as well. And that kind of, like, set us up for, like, the, the whole Black Ops 3 season. So I absolutely love that. Shadows of Evil has a lot of content. Absolutely love the Pack-a-Punch camo, which is just mm. And uh, the training spots are really, really good. We have the Civil Protector, we have the Shield. This map is really a masterpiece. Like, coming in at number 5 spot, Kino Dertonen, my favorite map of all time. I really want to place this map at number 1 spot, but I know, like, this map doesn't really have a lot of content to offer, but it's just one of those maps that are relevant to this day as well. Like, a lot of people are playing this map, they would play this map every single day. Not every single day, but uh, when this map was first released, people were playing this map every single day, and that map was relevant for a long ass time, and still to this day, it is pretty damn relevant. Of course, we got it remastered in Black Ops 3, so the whole Gobblegum edition is pretty damn new and everything like that, and uh, we recently got the M1911 as well, and the AK-74U, so that kind of like revives the fun factor and everything like that, and it is that iconic map that you're gonna play with your friends, and you're going to have that fun time. This is my favorite map of all time. I don't care what anyone says. I'll be a happy ass dude if I actually place this map at the number one spot, but I know it doesn't have a lot of content to offer, so that's why I don't have it at my number one spot, but I know a lot of people actually love this map, and uh, it is a great map, and it is still relevant to this day. That's why I have it on my number five spot. But coming in at number four spot, we have Mob of the Dead. Now, before I go on a rant, before I say like how amazing this map is, first of all, Treyarch effin remaster this map. I will love you forever. Now the characters of this map really makes what Mob of the Dead really is. Uh, this map is based off of the real prison of Alcatraz. Brutus as a boss is really good as well. We have the shield. We uh, we also got one of the best perk, uh, the electric chariot. Zombies had red eyes, which was really unique at that time, and that map was considered one of the best. And it is still relevant to this day, and it is still one of the best maps to this day as well. A lot of people actually uh, love this map, and they. Would happily class this map as the first uh, but I have other maps that I, I will get to it which does have a lot of content and we have the house retriever in this map we also have the sick ass wonder weapon that has two sort of like uh, equivalents I would say not equivalents but variants the whole afterlife aspect was really damn good as well and this map has a lot of content we have the golden gate bridge and we also have the golden spork as well it has a lot of content but you want to know what has a lot of content origins that comes in and at our number three spot. Now you may be thinking like Skizzle, what the heck dog? Like you gotta place my neighbor Origins at number one spot. Now hear me out. Origins, it's the greatest map of all time, like period. Like I absolutely love this map and everything about this map is great. We have like four different staff, like looks really good in terms of like visuals and how they are, how they play and everything like that. But Panzer, mm, he's crazy. I absolutely love him in terms of like uh, content, I would say. Panzer was a good content for the map, but at the same time, he was annoying as hell, and a lot of people kind of like hit him, including myself as well. But he does create a lot of challenging factors for this map, which is something that you may love. But it has a lot of content, which is great and all, but at the same time, it does have a lot of it, which means that you may be overwhelmed when you first play this map, right? And at the same time, I wish like if you were playing solo, you only would have to upgrade one step, and you could do all the Easter egg steps, and you can get done with the Easter egg, right? I don't know 
know how you feel about this, but that's how I personally feel about this map, but love the map, it's a classic, it's gonna be here for good, and of course we have it remastered in Black Ops 3, and a lot of people kind of like, like the original Origins, me too, but of course I love the new textures, the graphics, and Origins remaster. but other than that, Origins remaster is a really hard map, and I personally like this map because it's a hard ass map, but coming in at number 2, we have Gorod Krovi. I don't know how to put it into words, but Gorod Krovi, one of the best maps. Of course, it's at our number two spot, so it's like uh, the second best map, in my opinion. And in terms of content, you have plenty of it. Oh, of course, we got the Papush bag, aka the PPSH. We have the dragons, which I absolutely love. I like how you kind of like go to the pack punch room. It is just so, so good. Of course, you work with the dragon eggs and everything like that. The baby dragon that you can have on your arm. I, I just forgot, like, what you call it, Siegfried, the gauntlet of the Siegfried which is just mm, I absolutely love it the pack punch camel were some of the best as well or one of the best I gotta say for sure and as soon as you start playing this map you gotta turn on or do those generators thingy or not generators but the things that actually fall from the sky you gotta do that to actually open the pack punch then you're also making the shield you're also like collecting those trophies of course if you're doing the easter egg and this map has the best easter egg boss fight like no damn question you got you're fighting the mama dragon of course you're fighting the uh the <laughs> Nikolai one as well. It's just one of the best map ever. Love the boss fight arena, love the boss fight, love how everything is, and the map is really challenging. The only thing I hate about this map is the fact that you gotta babysit the Mangler and the Valkyrie. I, I don't like the fact that you gotta have that Gobblegum, the Walking Dead, something like that. I personally don't like that, but at the same time it creates a lot of challenge. So in that regards, I absolutely love this map. Gorod Krovi is gonna stay for good and uh, I'm really excited for the next track game but coming in at number one spot I'm pretty darn sure you expected their eyes on draft to be at number one spot or you may have not but first of all four different bows I gotta say in terms of performance now please don't hate me when I say this but realistically statistically in terms of performance bows are way better than staffs now staffs they are good looking uh, they are also good in performance but there is no question like how powerful the electric bow is and the void bow the fire bow and the wolf bow as well they are really good and when you have all camp it's game over and this map also has uh, basically you can train wherever you want to you can train inside the church you can train at the courtyard you can train underground where the pyramid is you can train at the what, what's it called death ray and death ray is also like a good strategy you have panzer which is not a big deal on this map you can easily get rid of him pretty damn fast when you have the electric bow you actually take the panzer to death ray one pull or a couple of pulls you're done with the panzer so that's that and believe it or not the rise on the rock was the first map that kind of like introduced us to boss fights and zombies right and i don't know if you remember that time but when we first saw the the boss fight and when we first saw the easter egg ending cutscene when we blow up the moon it was so mind-blowing it was mind-blowing as f right and it was crazy how like we uh, progress from shadows of evil or how we progress from uh, Nagder and Toten to the rise and Dragon. it was crazy and also we have the dragons on this map and in the boss fight arena we also have a uh, little dragon egg so that was kind of like setting up if you get what I'm saying that's when we had a huge ass egg in that that was kind of like broken and and we also had the broken wall room in that's so we knew that actually a dragon escaped from it and in Gorod Krovi, boy oh boy, we had the dragons. It was like really, really crazy. And hands down, the Rise and the Route is the best map ever to this day. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Check out some other videos by clicking the end screen element on the screen right now. If you have missed any of them, subscribe if you happen to be new. Smash the like button if you did enjoy this video. And I'll see you very freaking soon.